Hi guys, Samantha from Just My Tutorials here. And today I'm going to show you how to create a cool tropical collar using canes. So to start with, you're going to need two Skinner blends, and I'll leave a link to how to create Skinner blends in the links below. So here's the first Skinner blend. Let me just zoom you out quickly. So the Skinner blend is between uh, Primo Green, Primo Wasabi. Primo Sunshine Yellow and Primo Ecru. Oh, you've gone out there. The second Skinner blend is between Ecru, um, Raw Sienna, and Burnt Umber. So if you don't know how to do Skinner blend, I will leave a link to it in the description below the video. Okay, and now we want to turn these into Skinner blend bullseye canes. So we'll just take it. Fold it in half, then I'm going to fold it in half again. And then I'm going to run that through the pasta machine from short end to short end. Okay, and I've run it out to about one millimeter thick um, so that we have a nice long piece. So let me just grab that so I can show you. Okay, so starting at the beginning and running all the way down, like so. So we're going to start with the ecru. Just move that down that end. And all you're going to do is you're just going to start to roll it. And squeeze tight because you don't want any air bubbles in here. And just roll that up the length, like so. And just continue until you have no more Skinner Blend left. And I'm going to repeat with the other one, the other Skinner Blend that we've made. And it's going to go from a crew again all the way up to the bird to umber. Okay, so you should end up with two Skinner Blends like that. Now we want to do a black and white border. So grab some black and this has been rolled out to about a millimeter thick as well and some white and I'm just going to lay that on top like so and smooth and I'm just going to trim and you would want to then pause and separate the white from the black okay, and I'm just flipping to do the other side okay there we are now I'm just gonna pop that to the side for a moment And we're just going to take these and we want to get rid of these um, ends that are a little bit crackly. So I'm just going to squeeze around those ends to get the pieces all together. Okay. And then I'll trim. Same with this one, squeeze, and trim away the edges. Okay, and I like this blend quite a bit. Right, now we're ready to wrap this and it's going to go from white on the inside of the plug to black okay then I'll just press there 
so that I know where to trim. There we are. And I'll repeat with this one in a moment. And just join this up together properly. And then I'll trim away that excess. Okay, and you should end up with two pieces looking like this. Now this one we're going to put to the side for a moment because we are going to use that in a different cane um, to this one. So this one what we want to do is we want to just reduce it a little way. And I started out with about one fourth of a block of Primo per colour in the Skinner blend when I did the cane. And then... Um, well, I just used the right amount of black and white to wrap around that. If you need um, some guidelines on where to start. But it really is up to you. Okay, just trim away those ends. And we can split this in half. And I need you to cut as straight as you can. Put one to one end, and I want to gently push down on this. Like so. And I'm going to turn it into a square cane. Now I'll just use my hand to do that at first, then you can use your roller to reduce it. And you will repeat with the other one as well. And then just reduce them until you can comfortably cut out around six pieces. No, not six pieces. Four pieces from each. That should be enough to work with. Okay, and you can see how quickly it has uh, shrunk down. So now we're going to cut out our four pieces. Press that down again, trim away any excess ends. And all these ends can be used in leftover um, projects. Have a look at my website, jessimatutorials.com, for some tutorials on leftovers. Okay, and there we are, we have four of those. So I'm gonna go and do the same with this one quickly. Okay, now I have a whole bunch of these. Or at least a few things. Okay. Now, each of them, I want you to take the top and just start pinching it up and the bottom so that you take it from what would be a square into kind of a distorted uh, rectangle. And don't worry about it being distorted, that's part of the cane. So just squeeze them like so. Okay, and then when done, you'll just line them up together, like that. Okay, then squish those together, like so. You want to get into a much more compacted rectangle, so just use your roller to help you out with that. and start reducing because we want to cut this into what I think would probably be our four pieces to reduce it right now this cane is quite versatile you can do it in any colours you want um, it makes a great petal cane if you took this and pinched it into the shape of a petal and then made a flower cane with it that would look quite cool as well Lots of things you can do with it. Okay, and I'm just pinching it along. And before I go too far, I want to have a look what it looks like. 
here's what it looks like and we're going to put it together like that so that it resembles almost a leaf and I think that's about as small as I want it so I'm just going to cut it in half I'm not going to cut it into four pieces now you can either put it together like that if you want or you can put it together like this and I'm going to put it together like this because I want this to form almost like a vein for my leaf and now we're not actually going to create a leaf but it's um, a themed project so you'll have seen in the final photos what I mean okay and I'm just pressing that all together so it's one solid piece of cane And you can use your roller a bit to get it into a nice even shape. Okay, and that's our first cane. I'm going to pop that to the side. Our next one is this one that we put off to the side a little while ago. What you want to do with this one is you want to start reducing it. And we're not going to do anything fancy to it. Simply what we're going to do is we are going to take it and reduce it into multiple different sizes, probably around at least four different sizes and we're going to put those all together on the collar. So that can that we just made before is supposed to kind of represent a leaf this one is more kind of to represent tree trunks. Okay, And I'm just squeezing around these ends because that um, reduces the amount of waste waste on the ends as you produce your cane. Okay, and I'll just roll the centre. And I'm probably going to reduce it down to about 0.8 millimetre, probably about 8 millimetres in diameter. start with. Okay, and you can use these ends to pull, it's quite nice. Okay. Now you can see how that looks. And then I'm going to just quickly reduce these ends a little bit more, to get them even. And then I'm going to cut this in roughly about half and put that to the side. And I'm going to continue reducing this and then I will cut it in half again once I've reached the size that I like. And you'll see how quickly that goes. So about there. Cut in about half again. And then repeat a few times. Okay, and here are the sizes that I have. So those are our canes that we need. So I'll just pop that off to the side again. And then you need a sheet of pearl white run out on the thicker setting of your pasta machine. Okay, and so that needs to be at minimum two millimeters thick. Then you're gonna need your collar cutter of choice. I'm using this new um, I do believe in South Africa we call it a delicious monster leaf. I'll leave a link to that in the description below the video. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this and I'm gently going to press down. I'm not going to cut straight through. All I'm doing is I'm leaving a mark. So that I can see where I need to lay down my um, cane slices. Okay, now I just need to make a mark around here quickly. Okay, and I'm just going to put, um, that's where I'm going to start putting the brown canes and this is where I'm going to put the um, green cane. So I'll pop that off to the side and we're going to slice our canes. So you're going to need a nice, thin tissue blade. 
just start cutting. And try to keep your cane slices all the same thickness. If you can't cut super thin, that's fine, but at least try to keep them all about the same thickness. Okay, that should be enough to start. Just going to put it along the center here. Okay, and we can clean up in a little while. Now, just curling that up, trying to get the pieces to meet, and I'll show you how to clean up nicely in a minute. Repeat on the other side, join the two together, hold and curl up. Join them up together, hold and curl up. And that takes care of most of it. Now you just need to go back and add some more where you need to. Just down here with the other little segments. Let me show you that quickly. But you need to add some more along here. And then just try to get them to meet up. Okay, you don't have to worry about these bits joining up because we don't have enough collar cutter to worry about that. But where it meets here, just make sure that it sits together nicely. Like so. Okay, and then you can go with the blade and just gently trim away areas where there are um, bits that you don't like. Like maybe I smeared a bit too much. Just use my blade to clear that up. Or where there's a bit of overlap, one's a little higher than the other, you can easily clean that up as well. Okay, I think that just about does it. And then what I want you to do is I want you to start flattening that out. And we're going to use a piece of plain printing paper for that. Just bring that over and just start smoothing like so. You're burnishing anyway. Okay, and I like to start with my fingers and then I'll use my roller. And you don't want to be rolling, you want to be rubbing. And that's why we need the paper so that it runs along the surface of the clay without getting stuck. And this will join up the cane slices. And then I'll just roll a little bit towards the end. Okay. And let's see how that looks. Okay. Now it's not completely joined together, but we can worry more about that later uh, when we're finished. For now, I'll just go and trim any areas where you might have some smudging, because there's bound to be some. Or areas where it's kind of flicked over a little bit like over there just so that you have a nice clean image and if you miss some it doesn't matter too much because we're going to be doing some um, sanding later on but it does save a bit of time as far as the sanding goes so I'll just pop that to the side again and we're going to bring over these 
and I want you to slice them about the same thickness as your previous cane. And you need to slice a whole bunch. And I like to rotate the cane as I'm slicing. It keeps it in a somewhat round form. You don't have to worry about it being perfectly round. But it does help if you rotate it a little bit to keep the slices round. Okay, so I've sliced a whole bunch. Now I'm just going to bring this over again. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. And I want you to overlap it just slightly. And then start piecing it together. Like so. And you'll just do it the whole way up here. Okay, and here is how it looks. So now I'm just going to take our um, paper again and I'm going to burnish each side and do this thoroughly because you want all those slices flattened out and now you can expect some smearing we will fix that the same way as we fixed the last cane so just press nice and hard you can use your roller as well if you want and there we are that should have smoothed it out pretty much run your finger along to check that it is pretty much smooth two little areas that I think need to be fixed. Just take your blade and run it over the surface to clear up any bits that look like they need to be cleaned. And remember we are still going to be doing sanding so any bits that did not get cleared up with your blade will be cleaned up through the sanding process. It's just that it's easier to do it with your blade because you know it also means that you save clay as well because well you can still use those clay bits for whatever you want whereas once it's baked it's baked so I'll just clean up this end and then I'll clean up the other end as well and then you will need to burnish it again And keep in mind you can use any shape collar for this. You can see that any shape would fix uh, work well with this. It's just that I'm going with the theme today. And so I'm going to be using that Monstera leaf cutter. There we are. That's what the name of the leaf is. We call it a delicious monster in South Africa. That's what I remember it is. Alright. There we are. So that's one side cleaned up. And you can see how much brighter it is compared to that side. So I'm going to clean up this side now. And there we are. And finally, we're going to burnish it one last time. And this time, be thorough. Because it is the last time we're going to burnish it. At least I think so. Unless I have another idea, which I think I do. But this is basically the final time you need to burnish it. So just make sure that you've got everything. And that is how it looks so far. So let me see how that looks with the cutter. Looks really nice. Alright. Okay, now I just spent some time positioning the collar into the right space. So now we're just going to press down nice and firmly. And because it's a rather large cutter, you need to almost go. along and just make sure that you've got a really nice clean cut and that's probably going to stick in the cutter due to the fact that we are cutting this on paper so don't be alarmed by that just go through and make sure that you've got a clean cut 
and the best way to check that is actually to take away the outside clay first like I haven't got a clean cut here I can feel that it's not giving it should come away nice and clean without any problems okay then just double check here And it's just giving me a little bit of trouble. Because I've also got a pretty thick piece of clay, because it's a collar. So I just need to press specifically on these areas. And that should allow it to come away. There. Took a little bit of coaxing, but it got out. Okay. Now take the opportunity while it is in the cutter still to just smooth the back. of any bits and then gently push it out the cutter like so and just be careful because there's quite a few little bits and pieces here so can take a little bit of work to get it out and if you want to prevent this whole um, fiddly bit thing here that I'm doing um, cut it off using a tile I wanted to keep the back nice and clean so I didn't use the tile there we are, there we are. Okay. Now just use your finger to just gently smooth away any fingerprints that you might have created on the top. And you're going to get a slightly domed edge, which I think is quite nice. Okay, and just make sure that you don't have any lines or anything. And it all smoothed out. Now just grab a piece of paper and don't press too hard because you don't want to distort the shape and just buff over the top, not buff, sorry, smooth over the top. And this will just get rid of any fingerprints that you might have. Just don't press too hard because you don't want to be distorting your shape. And this is going to be, and I'm doing all this because we're going to be sanding a lot later and the last thing I like to do is sand a lot. So doing all of this beforehand where you just go and you're like really picky about um, all the little imperfections, it's best to do that before baking. I okay, have a little scratch there. And you can go around the edges and smooth that as well. Okay, but that's basically it. And now we don't need to worry about the back or the sides. That's basically finished. We just need to give that a good sand. Okay, and so now I'm going to show you how to bake that quickly. Okay, so what you need next is a necklace stand like this. And you're just going to grab your collar and you're going to position it where you would like it. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time figuring out where I like it best because we're going to heat set it on here. Okay, and here is how it will look. So now we're going to take a heat gun, any heat gun, and this does not substitute for baking your piece. It's just going to get it into a shape so that it holds that shape in the oven. So you're going to take your heat gun and you're going to set it onto a medium setting. And you're just going to set this so that you can maneuver it into the oven without it breaking.
and I, I will probably spend maybe around two minutes at least to around five minutes setting this going slowly from back back to forth around the collar until it is um, not brittle anymore and I can handle it there should be no more raw clay on the piece right and so the next step is to just make a bundle of cloths like so in kind of a round shape it doesn't have to be necessarily accurate and we're just going to very gently take our piece it is very fragile and we're just going to place it on there it doesn't have to be perfect and you're going to put that in the oven for a full hour at pretty much recommended temperature and you must do this because otherwise it won't be baked properly okay and then when it is out of the oven while it is still hot you want to place it onto your stand in the right position and you want to hold it there until it is cooled like I have with this one now that is a little bit challenging that technique especially with one where it has these thin parts so if you are having trouble uh, by any chance uh, with the stand you can always bake it on a nice big round bowl okay so now that it is cool we are going to give it a real nice sand so I'm going to start with my 400 grit polishing paper so let me just bring uh, one of those over and I've used this one already as you can see and all we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to start sanding and this is not meant to remove a lot of material it will remove a little bit if you want to remove a lot of material you can use wet dry sandpapers um, but this one is just meant to kind of get rid of any uh, sparkly parts so I'll show you that in a second so I've sanded that section a bit and you can see that this section hopefully over here is a lot more sparkly than around here so you'll start with your 400, work your way up all the way to an 8000 uh, not 8000 sorry uh, yes 8000, 400 to 8000 polishing papers if you need to use wet dry sandpaper and then when we're done I am going to um, see how nicely it is sanded and whether I want to put some resin or liquid clay on it because I might want to do that but I am going to sand it thoroughly first alright so I have finished sanding and here it is now after sanding it's going to flatten out a little bit but that's fine because I want to put some um, I've decided to put liquid clay on it to give it a shine because although I can get a nice sand from it um, I think I would like a really nice shiny back so now I just want to let you know I have done two just because I really like this pattern so you can see the two of them here so we're going to start with one by putting liquid clay on and then after we've done the uh, liquid clay part I'm going to put it back on the necklace stand and I'll show you how to do that so I'm going to be using Kata Clear Liquid Clay and you can get this at Linda's Art Spot if you want um, she has a lot of liquid clays there and she also has a bunch of Kata clay as well if you're interested in getting started with that so check her out if you're looking for Kato liquid clay and other hard to find brands so I'm just taking this and I'm spreading a fair amount of liquid clay around you don't want too much but you do want enough to coat then you can either use a brush or I like to use my finger to just gently smooth it around and it shouldn't drip all over the place it should just kind of sit happily on top and so I might need to go back over and brush away some of the excess because I can see some areas where we might have a bit of excess because when you use the heat gun um, it blows the liquid clay so if you have a lot of liquid clay on here it can um, cause distortion and drips and things like that which isn't so cool and you could put it in the oven but um, I find that it just doesn't come out as clear if you put it in the oven so I prefer to do it with a heat gun and I'll show you that in just a moment okay now I'm just going to grab the heat gun and put it on the hottest setting and cure this
done. So that was the entire process on camera. And now everything should be completely clear. Before you do anything else now, you want to just go through and check. Make sure that the whole thing is clear. If you see any um, smudgy spots, like I see a little bit of cloudiness around here, you want to go back with the heat gun and get it. I'm just going to pop that out the way and pop this onto a stand. Okay, and I've got this nice cold soaking wet cloth. I'm just going to pop over the top and very gently hold down until this has cooled. Okay, and that should get it um, set to the right shape and then we can just finish it off. Okay, and here is what it looks like now. So you can see it's beautiful and shiny. Very easy way to get a almost resin-like finish to it. But the nice thing about the liquid clay is that if you mess it up, um, which with practice is not that uh, often, if you do mess it up, you can easily just sand it, get rid of it, and then retry again. Whereas with the resin, is a little bit hard to um, get rid of. So that's why I prefer to use liquid clay. So we have two collars here now. They have a beautiful, beautiful shine to them. And our next step is going to be to give the back just a little bit of a buff. I'm not going to do anything special to it. I have sanded the back, but um, I do want to give it just a tiny buff. This is not completely necessary. You don't have to do it, but I find that it would look quite nice with a buff. That's all we need here. It just gives it a little bit more of a sheen. Just slight. Okay. Now we're going to drill holes ready for assembly. So we're just going to grab these ends here. Another nice thing about the liquid clay is unlike resin, it will not crack if you drill it. If you've put UV resin here, which you can use as a substitute uh, instead of uh, liquid clay, if so, if you're too scared to use liquid clay, UV resin will always work, but you just need to be careful when drilling because it can crack sometimes. Okay, now I'm just drilling straight through using a pin drill. And I've just got my finger poised on the other side so that whenever it comes through, I can start going from the opposite side. Okay, and I can feel it coming through. should be able to see a mark. And that should pop through any second. There we are. Nice clean hole. Okay, and I'll repeat on the other side and with our other collar. Okay, and so the next step is going to be to attach our clasp. So I'm going to be using copper because I think copper goes the best with this. So you'll just take a jump ring and fit it through your hole like so. Then a length of chain and now this bit's a little fiddly. So just bear with me on it. There we are. Close that jump ring. Fit the jump ring's um, opening back into the hole in your collar. Grab another jump ring. And the other end of your chain. And then finally your clasp, like so. And I've already done that on the other end over here. So that we have our finished piece. And that is our finished collar. So let me just zoom it out quickly. Here we are. And let me get that one. There we are. So there we are. You can see the finished piece there. And let me just bring over whoops, 
the other one as well. I haven't done the uh, pores yet, but that basically is our finished project. So, I do hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Um, creating the canes was quite a bit of fun. And remember, you do not have to use the color cutter that I used in this project. You can always use these canes in different projects if you want to. Consider making pendants, maybe some earrings. A uh, bracelet would also look nice. Um, and you can use the exact same technique here. So, for instance, around here, you would do one side of your pendant this and one side of your pendant um, that where it overlaps and then you would just cut it out and you could do the same for earrings and the same for a bracelet if you wanted to so play around with it see what you can do and if you would like more tutorials like this please do consider checking out my patron membership I post tutorials on there every single month that I'm sure you won't want to miss as they are exclusive to patron so I'll leave a link to that in the description below and as always I'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now